got em, got em, got em, got em Make another couple hundred grand a month No, I can do it, I just gotta stand a hunt Grab some snacks and some fluids and a couple hands of blunts I play through the fourth quarter, I don't plan to punt Gotta make Welcome, welcome back to the Entrepreneur's Podcast No, I can do it, I am your host, Randolph Love the Third, Charter Financial Consultant, Business Owner and certified life coach, life coach specializing in business and startup coaching. If you're looking to start your business or to perfect your current business and you understand the value of having a coach that hits all the right notes, call me or reach out on rightlifecoach.com. Today, I have on the show the founder and owner of Magnus is greater magnus x and like the name magnus has always been great i've known him for a long time magnus or as i known him as zay or as i known him as the boss or as i known him as tony maselli has always taken great pride in his personal appearance and his professional work product with Magnus is greater. He's found a way to marry the two of his great traits today on the entrepreneurs podcast, Magnus S. What's up, man. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you for having me, man. For real. I'm, and not just the show, man. Thank you. Go ahead and tell people who you are and what do you do? Um, I go by Magnus X, the creative director, owner, operator of Magnus is Greater, the best independent black brand you'll ever see. Woo. <laughs> Absolute. Now, all right. So, and, and, and I did have the privilege of ordering some of the magnets, magnets is greater uh, uh, clothing. Can you tell us about that? How did that come about? And, and what does magnets is greater mean? I'll start there. Um, as the years go on, the consumer becomes more and more redundant in their understanding of things. So the purpose of my brand and even the naming of my brand is redundancy. The word Magnus is a term that that's Latin. It's used to identify great. So my brand name is Magnus is greater. The name itself explains what it is. Um, my goal, my goal for the brand is to identify and to create the question of what is the best? Why is it the best? And that's the whole goal and the point behind that. Anytime you used to see the word Magnus, it was in front of a king's name. It's why I refer to myself as Magnus X. You know my legal name, and I just put greatness in front of it. That's what this is all about. Mm-hmm. Um, now, for, for as for my brand and where it comes from, um, I'm a creative person. I never not been, um, and I'm a person that has a um, a high. I'm sorry, I'm grinding up weed and everything like that while I'm talking to you. Oh, it's all good, um, man. I'm in the in a state where it's legal. Um, <laughs> uh, Denver. So, Denver, Colorado, yes, sir. So, my goal is I'm a little bit older, so I'm from a, a day and age where if you, you ask your mom for a pair of Nikes, you can sit down and justify to your mom why buy those pair of Nikes? It has air technology, Italian leather, so forth and so on. That's quality. Um, mm-hmm. We're in a day and age, and that's no. this is no shot to anybody that's running a business. We all start somewhere. We're in a day and age of people buying pre-made clothes out of catalogs and putting their own tags on it. They have no interest in the quality because they don't know they're buying it out of a catalog. We, we, we lost that, that quality. We lost what made a Ralph Lauren piece a, a Ralph Lauren piece. 
we lost that because fashion just moves entirely too fast now. Forever 21 can take your idea and realize it in a week. So you don't have a lot of smaller brands don't have the time or the luxury to, you know, go through five and six samples to get the the material feel right and things of that nature. So they just order one time out of a catalog, slap their tag on it and call it a day. The purpose of my brand is to make, to create the question, why? Why am I giving you a premium dollar for exactly what I just said they're doing? I would rather give that money to someone that sat down, they know the materials that, that they're using to the T all the way down to the cotton. This is something I actually care about. You know me. I've always been a dressing dude. So Mm -hmm. this is like what I, this is what I do. I care about that type of stuff. I know what makes a $300 hoodie versus what makes a $3 hoodie. And I just want to give that to, to, to people that look like me. And that is something that I wanted to, uh, cause prior to me ordering, right. Um, cause you know, I'm one of them people where I, I'll just support my friend's businesses, right? So uh, with you, I was actually trying to order secretly. <laughs> I was trying to order like on the slide, but I think yeah. I, I had to hit you up because uh, it was something with the site uh, that I couldn't figure it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, after I ordered and then I started uh, looking more into your, your brand and uh, and trying to, you know, see what you do. I'm looking at pictures. I'm like, hold up. Is Zay actually putting this stuff together? He not just having it made somewhere. Is this him? So I think you just confirmed that. So I, what made you do it that way instead of, you know, probably what would have given you better margins just to do what everybody else doing, just having it uh, done somewhere? Um, Just for the main purpose of my brand i'm greater than everybody i'm better than everybody that's not an arrogance thing that's me understanding that i am very versed in what i do Mm -hmm. so it's it takes me it costs me nothing to find a material find out what materials fear god use get those materials myself fear god is a brand their hoodies cost about three four hundred dollars um, I find out what they use. I do all of the R and D because that's what usually creates supposed to what creates the expensive thing in, in products is the R and D and stuff like that. And when you say well, R and D, you doing mean that. Uh, research and development? Correct. Okay. The trial and error of seeing which materials work. Oh, this material makes you itch. All of those things factor in to a quality piece of product. It does. So if you aren't hands on, it's really hard to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So I always knew that I wanted to be hands on um, and make sure that it was to my, my standard. Yeah. Not somebody else's in a factory standard to my standard. Mm -hmm. And therefore Magnus is greater. It's just greater. Like that's the whole point is to say, you know what? I know this black, I know this black dude, he putting out product, he putting out hoodies that should cost three, $400. He charging 60 bucks. for them. Um, like I, I always try to identify other brands and things of that nature. Um, there's a brand that makes shorts similar to the ones you bought from me. He charged $125 for those shorts. Mm-hmm. Same shorts material, good. same product. Nice, look, nice same, weight like, on them. And I, I've even made them better. You got the first set. Ah, right, that man gave me the. Um, uh, what, what, what was it in a uh, in a uh, Terminator? You get, what I got the T one thousand version. Basically, like, and that's if, and if you follow my brand, that's something that's understood. Mm-hmm. I don't make a product and say this is the product and just put my feet up. I make a product. And then I want to make it better every time. Mm-hmm. I my goal for my brand, and I'm sorry if I'm kind of all over the place. Oh no, nah, you um, you my you, go- you right in the spot because uh, and I and and remember keep your point real quick. But mm-hmm. 
I like where you're at because you've always been a confident dude. So confident that, and and just so I say always, me and you, we've known each other over 15 years, right? Uh, okay. You've always been a confident dude, but it's, you're, you're a little different now because back in the day, you were so confident that people you would mistakenly call you arrogant. But you would mm-hmm. never explain yourself the way you're explaining mm-hmm. now. And you would never put a, a, a you know a disclaimer like, "Hey, everybody starts somewhere, uh, uh, but I'm greater." You see what I'm saying? This so, is where I'm at. So, everybody starts somewhere. This is where I'm at. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. So I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, get back to your point, Magnus. All right. So like with my brand, like the whole the whole goal is, and when I started this was. I wanted to make one jacket and one jacket that is your favorite piece. And the only way to be somebody's favorite piece is to have everything that they current favorite piece have and be better. So I am always looking at new brands. I'm always looking for who people say is, is dope, who they say is, is good quality. And that's not to take nothing from them. It's not to hate on them. It's not to do anything but to be better. I can't speak for no other brand, but I'm a disruptive brand, and that's just being real. Mm-hmm. I'm I am here I am here to make the big boys uncomfortable, mm-hmm. and I've already done that. So that's my goal. Because if I make you uncomfortable, then you know you won't be able to get away with making three dollars shirts and charging people a hundred dollars for it no more. Mm-hmm. And, and capitalism and is built on. Uh, market disruptors. Uh, you know we we're, we're so used to you know, and some people would still call it a high bill. Uh, but at one point, it it was thousands of dollars just to even put get a cell phone in your hand. Uh, now Back. because people became so good at it, still making more quality, but mm-hmm. in a different way, they disrupted the market and things had to change. Uh, and, and bringing up the same, uh, probably the same people, uh, iPhone was the first people to disrupt the customer service market. Apple, I should say. They were the first company mm-hmm. to go 24-hour, seven-day-a-week customer service. And all the other companies like, hold up, man, bro. We had them all trained. Nine to five, mm-hmm. Monday to Friday. Why, why are y'all doing this? Uh, they say, yeah, well, you make it. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. You, 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 you about to finish my thought. Go ahead. Like, you know what that is? And I say this to my peers all the time. And I say it so they can understand to get to it. The old guard is the money. All the money is being held by old people with old ideas and old understanding of how things work. I say this because I worked for um, one of the big television companies and they purchased a streaming platform. They purchased that streaming platform just to know how it works because Mm -hmm. they old and don't know what they doing. Once they learned how it worked, they dissolved the company. I don't even want you to compete with me. I don't want anything like this to compete with me, but now I know how it works but I can destroy it because I want to keep it the old way. So I implore everybody that's listening to this, find something that you know ain't being done right and disrupt that shit. Absolutely. I feel like the clothes, the clothes ain't being done right. And I I heard you mention what you say to your peers. Who do you consider your peers? You're one of my peers. Um, granted, I'm you know I'm not a chatty dude. I don't I'm not a talkative guy, um, so I don't reach out a lot. But when I do, I do. Um, like my peers are people, and I try to keep people around me that are better than me. I try to keep people around me that can tell me I suck at something because. At the end of the day, I don't have an ego that is too good to not get better. Mm-hmm. I don't have an ego where 
and this is something you you came up in the mud with me, so you know I was I used to be too good to ask for stuff. That ain't me. Man, I ain't too good to ask for nothing at, at this point. And I'm because I believe in what I'm doing. And and I'm glad you brought that up, man, because I want to get into that, and that's why at the opening. I was like, thank you, right? Because before you even knew me, uh, we have a mutual friend named Brian. Before he even you even knew me, he can't I remember he said, Hey, and this is before I knew who you was, I just saw you as a as a as a man standing there. And he said, Hey man, this man need a job, man. But you know, is uh he got an interesting story. <laughs> Can, can can we help him without even knowing who I was? You said, all right. How much you want to be paid? <laughs> so what, up. what went through your because, mind in that moment? Like, it, do do you remember that, that I, moment? Because to me, it's etched in my brain because of what I was dealing with. Um, I do. Um, I remember that moment because it was a brand new um, store and we needed employees. Um, I was the young kid. I was the one with the young and smart ideas. And I worked for an old white man. He the one ran the store. Um, I knew that we needed to have people that look like the people in that neighborhood. I knew that we needed to have people that spoke like the people in that neighborhood. And I was young and I was in that same position. I've been in that, not, not your exact position, but I've been in a position where it behooves people to say no to me. Mm-hmm. And I also understood that the people that were saying no to me, they were only saying it because it behooved them to say no. Mm-hmm. It wasn't because I was good I, or I was bad or I was incompetent. It had nothing to do with any of those things. But it's the smart thing to do not to fuck with you. I'm sorry if I'm not allowed to curse. Um, everybody, hey, everybody think that it just so happened that I don't. I think. Hold on, let, I'm trying to think. So far, you have been the oldest friend I had on here. So you know, we normally, you know, we normally cup talk normal. We, you feel me? <laughs> yeah, we just shoot. We just shoot it. Yeah. So it's like, um, I just, I just want to be, you know, respectful to your audience and everything like that. It's all but good. You man. know me. I just say what. Nah, it, I it makes sense. Up. You're gonna be the first episode. Well, I click explicit, and I'm proud of it. Go ahead. Like we, so we shoot from the hip. Uh, so, so all yeah. right. Go ahead about that area. It's cause I, I, I want to get in because prior to you, because you were running that the 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 parts. Uh, because we were working for a major uh uh parts and service company. Uh, and you were running <laughs> the entire parts and well the service department. I don't know if you were over the parts department. Um, I was over on service. Yeah. So how did, how did you even get to that position? And Um, does it, does it something, what you learned in that position, uh, affect the way you run your company now? Absolutely. And I'm going to say a name and you're going to, you're going to know exactly what, what I mean about this is something I'll never do to somebody. Teddy. Mm, Ted, like the like the Godfather yep. of the shop. Correct. You remember what they did for him? I don't know if you remember what they did. Nah, you, you see, I, I remember what. I, I was one of the people who, if if it didn't bother me and nobody wanted to talk to me about it, I just didn't really ask too many you questions. Stayed, you stayed out of the way. All right, I will share that because people need to understand how these corporations work and how they view and treat people. Mm-hmm. Um. Like you said, we work for a major company, so they got money. They had a capital. Um, the guy we talking about, he was a mentor to all of us. All of us there. He Absolutely. was the OG. Um, Teddy, and it wasn't a secret. Teddy Drain. Yeah, that was never. It was never not a secret. It didn't adversely his affect his career. Job. Yeah, didn't didn't affect his job at all. In fact, he was better when he was drunk. They knew that already. He was the quintessential uh, functioning and, you know. Shade tree, shade tree mechanic. Yeah. Professional shade tree mechanic. Yeah. Uh, um, 
Um, so Teddy's been working for this company. He's nearing retirement. Teddy's got a brand new child. We already know Teddy was wild. So he ain't no business having no kids at his age, but he's a wild boy. Yeah. Um, he got a kid to take care of. He about to retire. What they did is they put an investigation on him, fired him right before retirement for being drunk on the job. Some shit you knew that he did wow. every single day for double digit years. Bro, I had no idea all that happened. I had no idea that happened. And Absolutely. You, and I remember you being upset. But you mm-hmm. were you were the constant, they tried to get me to fire him. You were the constant professional mm-hmm. though. Mm-hmm. Mm. They tried to get me to fire him for that reason. And I was like, I can't fire him for something that I know he did before I even started here. Mm-hmm. Something y'all, that y'all you willingly made it okay. And that y'all willingly made okay. took the benefits of. Correct. So I'm not going to hold what makes him great at his job against him. I'm mm-hmm. not going to hold what makes him make me money against him. I'm making money. Mm-hmm. He making money. Y- y'all making money and the customers are happy. he hasn't t- they happy they come and ask for him by name because he looked like everybody in the neighborhood everybody knows him and i want to transition if that's all right we're in a renaissance for people that look like us we're in an absolute renaissance i think that this pandemic has absolutely showed us of value to big corporations. It's just how it is. And at some point in time, we're going to have to start spending money. It's the saying that, that, that goes back. You, you go where you want it. You like who like you. You love who loves you. Mm. And we're coming more and more spiritual as a people. So we care about that now. It used to be just give me what I want and I pay. That's not the case no more. And I, I'm so happy about that because it gives opportunities for people that look like you and I to be able to show our real talent. So what does, and I know we all, I think, know the word renaissance in the time and history that it represented, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I, even though I, I don't know the exact dates, but I, I always affiliate Renaissance with a bunch of art. What does Renaissance mm-hmm. mean to you? A Renaissance is, for me, is, is um, it's the phoenix coming from the ashes. It's a rebirth. It's the people taking the control and identifying what's right. When it came to art, the Renaissance, when it came to the artistic Renaissance, there was a point in time where kings and certain people dictate what was cool, wasn't cool, what was just and wasn't just. When the Renaissance took place, they said, no, this is art and you're going to respect it as art. And that art was better than everything that those kings and everybody else said was the best. Mm -hmm. That's what I see and that's how I view a Renaissance with everything. We have so many amazing people of color that are creative, that are smart, that are innovative, that just don't get the opportunity based off of circumstances. Like, I'm for nothing. Like, on paper, I shouldn't even be doing what I'm doing right now. But I have a desire for knowledge. So that's how I learn the things that I learn. Like, I I hate to talk about old stuff. Like, I made music for you. Yeah, I made I made music for y'all out of necessity. My friends want to make music. That's what a black man can do. You did make something out of nothing. And 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 that was that was one of the things about you. It's like you knew something about. It seemed like everything we brought up, no matter how the degrees of separation between topics. Not only did you used to know things about it, you knew about it at a high level. And I I do distinctly remember in my mind every once in a while saying something that you didn't know about yet. 
and I got to explain mm-hmm. it to you <laughs> the way you explained to us, right? So, so mm-hmm. when did you notice that you had that ability to, because what you have is, all right, so a couple of things that I preach is a uh, general knowledge and specialized knowledge. It seemed mm-hmm. like, and I don't know, no, I, it's so almost impossible to me that I, I don't know how you would do it, but I know that, you know, everybody has their genius, right? And it, it, mm-hmm. it, it manifests mm-hmm. itself in multiple ways. So I get was that's, I guess it was your genius, but for me, I knew, gen, I know general knowledge and specialized knowledge. It seemed that you gen, mm-hmm. you had a bunch of general knowledge in a bunch of specialized topics, but it, but you were at, at a high level. When did you notice that you had that ability to know so much at a high level about multiple topics from music to fashion? Break. From breaking a Nintendo and putting it back together? On purpose. Yep. Um, that's how my brain works. How, you know, like people say like they're visual learners. Or, you know, calisthenic and all these different ways to learn. Um, I learned by breaking stuff. And as crazy as it sounds, like I learned from messing up. I learned by breaking things. Like, I, and that's why I always tell people, don't be afraid to try stuff. Because there's lessons in the law. Mm. I tell people all the time, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as a L. Because we use the term L. Like, I tell them life serves you L, but it's not the L that you think that you're being served. Life serves you lessons on top mm-hmm. of lessons. And it's, and it's for you to be receptive to them lessons and be receptive to saying, okay, well, this is something I really want to want to do. And crazy as it sounds, the world starts opening itself to you in those lanes. Um, I had a friend that wanted to make music. Um, the same guy, Brian, he wanted to make music. Me and his cousin did not make beats for, for, from a can of paint. He was classically trained in music. We just made a bet as for who would be able to make the better beat. I didn't know what I was doing at all. Zero idea. Made a, beat, a better beat than he did, and that was literally it. Because I said that's what I wanted to do. And then the world said, boom, I'm at the grocery store. I see Computer Music Magazine and literally on the front of it that same day, it says Fruity Loops demo inside. Now I got the means to make it. It's on me to care enough to get better or understand. So that's what I do. Mm. Yeah, and I think the person you're talking about is uh he he's making music now uh high, at a higher level, and I like what he's doing. Uh, I, the cousin Brian's cousin. Were you talking about Gene? Yeah, man, that man got a uh he got a security business now, and uh it, and he's one of them you know because the type of music he made is like hey I'm a hustler boy, and, but <laughs> and, and, but a part of his brand where he shows, Hey man, I'm on the job, right? But guess what? I'm on my job. I'm real. I'm a real hustler. Here's mm-hmm. proof of concept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what we, that's what we're looking for from our businessman. Now we're looking for real proof of concept. Like you can't tell me because everybody's smart enough to know you get a record deal the first thing you're supposed to do is buy a chain so you can look like you have more money than you have. (laughs) Yep. We we're in a day and age where the consumer knows how the business works. Mm. And by that, by that veil being lifted like that, it makes things really different. It makes things really weird. But what's so crazy about it is that what how what is being countered with is the currency of attention. Mm-hmm. So what really matters get lost in translation because it's like like I said we know how the bu- music business works so we know when something's going to be a quality we know when something's not going to be a quality we know that this is not good we know all of these different things 
but we will allow ourselves to feel obligated to posting on social media, playing a song that we know sucks because everyone else is doing it. And cause, cause proof of concept is basically defended by how much attention you can hold and, and what people would pay uh, in return for their attention. Uh, so proof Correct. of concept, what, what does, how do you, before you, cause you, you, since you put a little bit more into creating your, your products, your pieces for Magnus, how do you mm-hmm. determine what to put your next energy in? Is it all right? If this is just what I like, if this design concept fails, oh, well, or do you have something in place to prevent you from uh, putting out something that even though you like it, maybe the your market might not like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But what you always have to do is you have to put it out there because how are you going to know? Mm-hmm. That is literally what proof of, proof of concept is. Me having an idea and me proving it will or will not work. Mm-hmm. And what some companies do, a lot like, of people don't know is they, uh, before they put out a product, they, uh, they actually pay for focus groups. And a, a focus yeah. group is just a, a, a you know, a, a skew of different people from different uh, uh, locations and demographics. And they ask them what they think. And then depending on what those people think, they multiply it uh, to try to extrapolate how it might be perceived in the market. Uh, but mm-hmm. it makes sense that somebody... <laughs> That's always been as confident as you say, hey, man, I'm just going to put it out. Forget uh, forget a, a focus group. <laughs> forget, a, a, a you know, all. Hey, listen, I like it. So I, I'm pretty sure my market's going to like it. Mm-hmm. So like how did, for me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. How did you come up with the logo? Because I know I know it's a greater than um, sign. But you could have did that in multiple so, ways based off your, the Latin and all of that. Absolutely. Um, the concept with my logo is you're standing next to someone in one, in one of my pieces. You're greater than that person because you give a fuck about what you're wearing. Uh, uh, it's subliminal. It's subliminal. Cause, uh, cause Magnus, of course, you've already explained what that means. That means, uh, great. What is that? Great or greatest? Greater. Greater. Got it. And then out mm-hmm. when when we started hanging out, your moniker was the boss. Also, mm-hmm. Tony Maselli, which was the main character in a show called Who Was the Boss. I'm all like, if you know me, I tie, I always, it's always going to have stuff tied together because, um, for me, see, that's a, that's what separates, um, a brand, a good brand and a bad brand, no matter what they're doing. If you have a real purpose in what you do, then everything else just falls in place. Like everything that I do has a purpose. So when it clicks, you go, Oh fuck. N- now you, now you're obliged. You, you're inclined to, to continue to rock with it because it's like, don't nobody think, think stuff through like that. Mm-hmm. They don't. And for me as a consumer, if like I'll use one of my products as an example, I made a windbreaker, but one of the things that people use windbreakers for is in the rain. I understood that. So if I'm going to buy a jacket, it would be nice if they coat the jacket in wax. It helps to keep for being with the water. Well, I got my cell phone in my pocket. It's raining. 
I totally forgot my cell phone in my pocket. Now my phone messed up. So what I did is I made waterproof pockets. I thought about you, the consumer. I thought about these things before you even did so. So when then when you encounter it, it just clicks. And then guess what? You may have liked what I, liked that jacket. Now it's your favorite jacket. Mm-hmm. Because it has everything that you need that you didn't even know you needed. That's what an iPhone did for people. People didn't know they needed an app store. The first iPhone didn't even have an app store. So that was that came after the fact. Yeah, because they were listening to their the market and not just focusing on what the consumer was already trained to expect. Mm-hmm. So it's about answering questions that ain't been asked yet. Absolute. So you, a majority, a, a large part of my the, my listeners that listen to this podcast uh, are around Florida. You're someone that's okay. also a Florida native that uprooted and moved almost to the other side of the country. Mm-hmm. What reasons did you decide to uproot and what have you noticed the difference in the cultures being that you've been there for so long now? Um, my reasoning for uprooting was I wanted something different. Um, I am from Florida. I am Florida. You can't name a city I ain't lived in. Um, I know Florida. So when you know the land, you love the land but you know there's a, a whole world out there. You just want to see it. Um, I wanted to see what it was like. I wanted to see what it was like to live in a place where winter was the was the season versus it being summer's the only season. Um, I wanted to throw myself in a place where I had to interact with a large number of Caucasian people um, because where we're from, the Caucasian people right off the bat are very angry and um, have issues with you just because of what you are. Um, as crazy as it sounds, that's not an issue here. What got me to move to this place, and I share this story with people all the time because it just really resonates. Um, I came here um, on a trip. And I was just walking around and I walked by a church and that church had a big sign in rainbow letters. Um, everyone's welcome. Yes. You referring to gay people. Now I'm a little bit older, so I seen how that kind of transpired into the acceptance and the understanding that's that great that that community has at this point. But I also understand that where I'm from, the two most hated people is a black man and a gay person. Because we're talking Bible Belt, this Florida. That spoke to me because if the place that usually shuns those people is asking them to come in, what's the mindset for everybody else around here? Mm-hmm. And that is the mindset. This is not like if you look into um, Colorado companies that are successful, it's not because of America made them successful. It's because Colorado made them successful. Mm-hmm. People have pop sockets on the back of their phone because Colorado made pop sockets and then made them hot. Mm. That's a Colorado product. If you come to Colorado right now, majority of the majority of the people you run into is going to be wearing something with the Colorado logo on it, the flag on it, something of that magnitude. The people here love and support their own to the to the max. Because I was actually, I can play, I can pull. I'm sorry. Now, you, you know what? You, you speak like me to where 
I be hanging on your word, but I don't never know when you finished. So that yeah. I be trying to see. All right, hold on. Okay, I think that was it. And then boom, I, I jump in front of you. But go ahead. So uh, people in Colorado support their own. They support their own um, to the point if I really wanted to play a cheat code, all I have to do is rebrand my company. It's a made in Colorado. This is a Colorado product. And I can probably quadruple my business. That's how much they support their own. Mm. And you I can would, literally just say you're from Colo Colorado, Colorado and you got it. And, and I was actually yep. about to, um, I would, I mean, I had my flight and everything. Uh, I reached out to you. You told me the best place to get a, a, a spot. You gave me some insight. Now everything was planned, but then the unthinkable happened. The world shut down <laughs> like, wow. The right. Whole world. And, and, and then I remember yep. I, I reached out to you. <laughs> Cause you know we man we man we we used to be hanging out back in Jacksonville uh uh DDB you know <laughs> hey so yeah. uh, hey <laughs> hey that's the inside people know what time it is hey so we 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 really no we took a bunch of risk right back in the day man mm -hmm. we rent out we we rented out whole floors of the of the the host the hotel the Quinta. Man, we used to rent out both rooms, yep. running back and forth. Man, we used to have a good time. Uh, you would have, you were one of the first people who, who used to, you know, invent drinks, right? And then every, then not a whole crew is talking. They calling your drink. Oh yeah, so I think one of them was like Skittles or some shit. All right, so, so uh, when I reached out to you, I said, I, I'm just assuming which I, I didn't know what was happening. So my first question was, Hey man, what, what's happening out there? Uh, and then, and I say, so actually my, I think my question was, Hey, so what is looking like, uh, out there? Cause this was April. This is after, you know, stuff had initially mm -hmm. shut down, but you know, it's still a little confusion mm -hmm. in the air. And I said, Hey man, what is looking like that? Your response was, I don't know what you plan on doing when you come here, but I'm not leaving the house. I said, well, all right then. Cancel my trip. <laughs> I say if 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 uh if Tony Maselli ain't going out, I guess I ain't going out. So what I'm what not, was happening? I'm not playing with it. What how did how did um, how did that what happened around the world manifest itself in Denver? Um, the well, the way it took place here is I always try to explain that the people of Colorado it's a bubble, like they're not racist. They don't even know what they don't even know how to be racist. They're literally in a bubble. Um, but of course, you have people that have migrated here because you can smoke weed for free. Um, you can do that here. Um, that's a thing. Um, Smoking weed for free can, is a thing. Yeah, I got an eighth yesterday for free. Um, charity weed. Like, yeah, charity weed. Um, it's beautiful here. If you're an outdoors person, this is the mecca for that. Um, so you got all these different people here. We have a lot of people from, you know, California that come here. A lot of people from New Mexico that come here and their mindset is totally different than the people that from this bubble. So you have people that believe it's a hoax and all of these different things. And in my head, I said, you know what? I know how serious I'm taking it. I can't police how anyone else, how serious they take it. So, you know what? I ain't got time to figure out when you got tested, if you did, if you didn't, or anything like that. I run my own business. I run my own business for my house anyway. Don't mind if I do. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I didn't come out the house. So I can't even really tell you what was really going on. I know we had a lot of riots going on here um, because that was also around the time of George Floyd and Brianna and, and everything like that. And then we also had a guy that got killed here by the cop. His mm -hmm. name was Elijah. So um, Elijah McCain, I believe is his last name. Um, so, so people were mad about that and that was going on. Um, I am here by myself, so I have a lot to lose. 
I can't play. I can't. I want to protest and be out there, but I get hit with a rubber bullet and I go in the hospital for a week. Nobody in my family will know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little bit different with, with like people when they, like how you act, you know, why up and move and everything like that. Um, people are afraid of stuff like that. And it's because of things like that. I don't have anyone there and things of that nature. Well, you just be smart about it. All right. I'm not going to go to anything that will create a situation where if I need help, I can't get it. Bro, and, and I actually kind of wrote the same thing on social when all this was happening. Because, dog, the, even in Jacksonville, it, it was going up. Right? And... Yeah. Uh, and even even my mama was at one of the uh, events. You know what the way it was happening was they would. It seemed like it was almost like two separate events. Like you know they had the peaceful people, and then as it turned the night, that's when it started getting extra mm-hmm. extra lit, right? But so of course you know she's an old older Christian woman, so uh, she was at the mm-hmm. daytime event, right? But I, that's mm-hmm. what I was saying. I like, hey man, even I truly support because I. I but prior to all these camera phones, we we knew what was going on, and and even you mm-hmm. knew what was going on, cause I, you know I think that did play a role yeah. in your getting up out of here too. Uh, uh. So, yeah. uh, when I was looking at, it, I'm like, man, I would love to go out and voice my protest because I've been affected mm-hmm. personally, and I've had friends affected mm-hmm. personally by the the discrimination and the unnecessary scrutiny that we get put on by uh the people who are supposed to protect us but i had that same thought i said all it takes for them is to do just another one not the first just another trumped up charge and 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 like you say just one rubber bullet that because that's that that's the metaphor i would use for the trumped up charges that we would get a rubber bullet Mm -hmm. now we're not gonna kill you but we sure gonna take you off your feet and it's going to leave a bruise. Yeah, we're going to make it real rough. Mm-hmm. Like, if I, I'm, I'm not a, I don't have a problem with speaking to that because um, I'm a victim of police um, brutality. Yeah. I am. Um, and that's exactly how it was maintained. It's like, well, you're going to take this ass whooping and you're going to just have to be all right with it. <laughs> and you're going to just have to stomach it because this is how it is. And it's like, but that's not how it is. And you know that's not how it is. That's not. That's not. That's not right. Um, but that's the that's the world. That's Florida. That's you know, that's what we're dealing with right now. Is that ultimately we don't have any real discourse or any real way to, to handle it on our own. So we just have to take it, and that shit hurts, and it puts you in like I stand. Like I don't know, if it's open. It's open carry here. I can walk around with my gun freely. Um, I know that, and I'm seeing um, our Caucasian counterparts doing the exact thing to enact and to prove a point and everything like that. And it's like I want to prove a point too. Mm-hmm. I want to be out there. So if you if you do act stupid, you do something silly. I'm out there to protect my, my people with my legal firearm. I want to do that, but I look like how I look. <laughs> mm-hmm. My mouth is how it is. Mm-hmm. So even if I'm doing all the right thing and you approach me and say, uh, and ask me anything, my response is I'm ex- executing my rights. Get away from me. That don't work well when you look like me. <laughs> With a gun in your hand, I have, I have big boy guns, big AR-15. I, you can't talk like that and look like me and hold an AR-15 at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I know that. So, But I also want to be out here in these streets helping my people. Yeah. So I, I, I would just pay my friends that game bang to get in the street. So... When, where do you think you got your helpful, uh, your helpful, 
way of life from. Because when I think now that I'm because I'm I'm putting all this together as we're talking. And once again, I knew you based off of you initially giving me a job when nobody else was giving me a job, bro. And then it just kept going from there. And I knew you personally. Everybody around us knew you personally. But once again, I got to say this because it, it just what it was. People just assumed you were an arrogant dude. When it was far from the truth, when you look at the actions of the things you would do for people, where do you think you picked up that uh, that that it seemed like an urge to help? Um, if it don't cost me nothing to do it, why not do it? Like I'm willing to help for free. I'm also willing to help at at a fee. Mm. Um, I'm just willing to help. I don't know where it came from. I think it's just because I've always been the person that was relied on. I'm the oldest in my family. I'm the only male. I was the head of the house. People leaned on me. Mm. So, so if you didn't um, figure it out, it just I, it probably wouldn't get figured out, and then boom, a failure. Exactly. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My friends want to rap. Yeah, I don't know how to get beat. Let me, well, then I, I guess I'm making beat. Man, you were the fill all, yes, man. My God, man. And, and, I, I, and that was a part of my growth, Zay. Because, you know, man, me and you, me and you had a, uh, we had a bunch of similarities. But I was young. I was, no, I thought I knew a lot of shit, but I was still young minded. You knew that. <laughs> And I just will let you have it. Like, I mean, like, because, like I said, life is about lessons. So it's like, we will, you know, talk every now and then. He's like, remember you told me this, this, and this would happen if I did it this way? Man, I seen somebody else do it exactly like you said. And that shit worked out perfect. And it's, and it's not because, and I don't think I know everything. It's just, for me, I broke that thing down. So, like, for me, even with the music thing, Mm-hmm. It was like, okay, we don't have much. So every time we, we get seen or do something, it's going to have to mean something. Bro, you every had us time. in apparel. You you had us think about apparel. We had, man, we had uh, our clothes done up. Uh, we, we, mm-hmm. we, 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 were, we were hitting multiple events, messing with the boss. You got to be seen. You it, gotta be seen. It was and so, I always understood. That. And it was so serious, man. Like, man, and once again, it was like, it's like, man, I'm here. Where where am I needed? And it was, it was you, you became so much a part. And and that no, we we had to put your name on the on, on the clothes, everything. <laughs> I like, man, boss, hey, t- boss, boss is here, right? To the point where everybody calling you boss and not even thinking twice about it. <laughs> yeah. Because um because I like the thing is, a real general, they like they troops, they they feel like that's their partner. They go to war for them because they believe in them. Mm-hmm. They go to war for them because they feel like that they bleed the time. That's why you go to war for people. And then when you make it where we not hungry. I got to ride for you. Mm-hmm. Like it, like when we was coming up, like I could, if I may share this, yeah, go ahead. Um, and stop me if I'm saying too much. I remember y'all shared y'all music with me, and I listened to it, and y'all thought I was a dick. I remember it vividly. <laughs> um, and I said, um, "This don't sound good." And I was like, "Well, what you mean?" Da 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 da. I knew how electronics work. I said, you're recording this in your house on a cheap computer. That's right. You were the first person to get us in a real studio. I forgot about that. I knew the moment I listened to it, the moment I heard it, I said, y'all are doing this wrong. And it wasn't because I thought I was better than it. I didn't even know anything about music like that. But I knew that that wasn't it. You knew sound quality. I knew that if I, I knew if I bought 
um, somebody's CD and it sound like that, I went buy another. <laughs> So, so for me, it was like, <laughs> let's make it to where if you finally grab them, because we knew that how hard it was to grab them. Yeah. So, so now once I got you, you can't say no to me. Mm-hmm. Hit, don't hit, the best of the beat, the best of the quality. We recorded in the same studio that Grammys was made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I name people now. Because it, because just to solidify a point, it's like no, we was like in the room with like I don't even know if you know this. Paul, the guy that used to mix our stuff, mm-hmm. five gra- five Grammys. I had see he never talks about his Grammys, <laughs> but no, nah. but yeah, I mean Paul, absolutely. Uh, you you introduced us to Jawad. One of the first professional yep. engineers we had, and then of course Paul. They were in the same uh, in the same facility. Uh, yeah, what else, man? What else you put us on? I remember down in the south, maybe one out of every hundred dudes listened to Dipset. You were one of them, mm-hmm. but you yep. you when you would have us sit down, and I remember what even um I think Joe Budden had a mixtape series out back then. Called what M- mood music? Mm-hmm. I think you would you wouldn't make us listen to it. It would just be playing while 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 you know we came to your spot. I'm like, ah, oh, this is all right. And 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 mm-hmm. at the time, it's like we didn't listen because our peers didn't quote unquote call it cool. Yep. But you had a different level of cool. When, when was the do you recall the first time, because uh, music, uh, at least back uh, when we were younger, with how people defined who was, you know, who was hip and who wasn't. Do you remember the first time you, like, you really loved a song? And, and, and you know, when people like songs, they want they want, they want to uh, share it and enjoy it with other people. You remember the first time and maybe what the song was to where you like, hey, man, this is it. And then all of, all of Southern Florida Duval folk talking about, nah, cuz. Um, man, every song I said, <laughs> and it was because, and and I say that because I was a kid that, um, when I was growing up, I like listened to like Smash and Pumpkins and stuff like that, and people made fun of me for it, and I'm like, nah, you idiot! Every it's music that means there's something in it that made it musical, mm-hmm. and I found it. You just you you're dim with it. You just can't see it, mm-hmm. and that was my mindset at first. And I always kept that mindset of, you know what, it's okay to like and know something different because there's some people that just don't know. Yeah. Um. That even went into high school for me. I dressed different. Like everybody was in. I'm trying to think of what was cool then. Dickies and Jabos. I remember like them that. days. I was wearing Iceberg. Mm-hmm. Like, I was wearing stuff like that. I wasn't even wearing American clothes at all. Um, and it was like, dude, you got Snoopy on your shirt and stuff like that. And then two years later, they, they mentioned it. it in a song. And then now they own it. <laughs> and now they own it. And it's like, no, that that's, again, it always it speaks to the person that really cares about what they're doing. I cared about what I was doing. Like, I, I really liked music. So I knew who Dipset was. And what drew even drew me to them is the samples they were using. And it was like, okay, I like that. They're using pop reference samples. So then you get familiar. It's like comfort food. You go, mm-hmm. okay, that's, fa- that's the Facts of Life theme song. Oh, that's the eighteen theme song. It brings you in. Mm-hmm. You know who's doing what Dipset did back in the day right now? And people probably don't even pick up on it. Who that? Young Berg. Mr. Hit Hitmaker. Young Everything Berg Hitmaker. Yeah. Do do, do behind a lot of hits. Something familiar. Everything everything he does got something familiar in it. Everything. 
he's the king of the 90s sample right now because that the age bracket right now that have the money to spend. Mm-hmm. So, right. and that's just smart. Absolutely. So <clears throat> is, is Magnus the only, cause once again, I'm, I'm just going off of, you've always had multiple hands in the pot. Is I know Magnus mm-hmm. is probably the primary, but is there anything mm-hmm. else that's cooking up? Maybe uh, that's affiliated with Magnus, or not even affiliated at all with Magnus, but just uh, something different. Absolutely, um, this is my passion. My goal is for my passion is to fund what's going to make generational wealth for the people that share my last name. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, my next phase is, um, I'll share this. No, I haven't even said this to anyone besides my mom. Oh, it's just us. Don't worry about it. And you know this, <laughs> you know me and you're my part. I don't care. Share. Yeah. Um, I'm moving to Mexico in January. Mm. Like not new Mexico, but legit Mexico. Mexico. And my reasoning and purpose in that is I want to invest in real estate there. I also want to learn manufacturing because if our country continues to go the direction it goes, we will no longer have a relationship with China and China manufactures 75% of everything in the world. Mm -hmm. So they're going to shift manufacturing to Mexico. It's cheaper to do it anyway. And you're getting ahead of the curve. I'm just trying to get ahead of it. And and all of generate the generate the relationship. And the logistics can own just the property. strictly be terrestrial over land uh without mm-hmm. having to include uh air and water. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's my whole goal is to try to jump ahead of the curve, build real estate there at a at a low rate. Um my goal, and, and this is something I'm going to put out there because anything that's documented shows intent and everything's not finalized, but I want to show intent. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be the first black man that you can come to and buy a 100% smart home. You can say, I want to be off the grid and you'll be able to walk in your house and flick a switch and you're off the grid. Ah, so you have the option of essentially air gapping your house. But when you don't want to air gap it, you have all of the modern conveniences embedded into the walls and the floors and the ceilings and the roof. Correct. Bro, that's very ambitious, but if anybody can do it, you can. Is there any last things that you want to share? with the entrepreneurs audience? Cause you, you shared a lot. Um, I want to share with your audience that just cause I said I'm great. Doesn't mean I am. I want you to find out for yourself. I want to tell everybody that's listening to this. If you woke up today, and you wasn't happy about the dollar you made, you're doing the wrong thing. Where can they find, find what makes you happy? Man, you, you can do, find me. You got me now. Hold up, you got me again. I, I interrupted you. Find what makes you happy. Good. Find what makes you happy. Find what fulfills you, and find what, whether it's a dollar or a thousand, you feel good about getting. Where can they find you? I don't make a lot of money for my brand. Man, stop doing that. (laughs) 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 No, I I thought I had you timed. I I, I looked at, because I got my my recording clock. I said, all right, two seconds, silence. Boom. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, go ahead. Because you and I, we wait. We wait for people to to make sure they understand what we're saying. Absolutely. Um, So... You can find all my socials is Magnus is greater. Um, 
I'm sorry if my Facebook is not the prettiest. I hate Facebook, guys. Um, but I understand it's important. Um, everywhere, man, this is great. I'm a semi-private person. I'm trying to share myself a little bit more with the world, but who's the boss on every social platform? Mm -hmm. MagnusIsGreater.com and our YouTube is just MagnusX. And on MagnusIsGreater.com, is there links to like the social media on there as well? Yes, sir. All right, so Magnus... Now, if you go to this site... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go, Go ahead. I was about to spell Magnus. It says it's locked. I got you. Um, if you go to the site and it's locked, because that was the issue you had, mm-hmm. I'm cooking up. I'm cooking up, and I want to focus on giving my people the best product possible. And I really do care that much. I stop everything to make the best for y'all. Um, and it's M A. G N U S I S G R E A T E R dot com. And, and yeah, and, and actually, because yeah, I that's I guess I figured you were cooking again because I went to your site again and left, and then it was a it was a password again. So I the way I the way I saw it was I I guess um you do you you ever been to any of those um speakeasies to where you have to know the code um, to get in absolutely this this exclusive baby i don't make <laughs> i don't make a lot of pieces i don't i don't make a lot of pieces that's by design um i don't want to spread myself out i can be in walmart right now they've offered me a check more than once mm-hmm. not interested because i'm not interested in math i want when you wear something of mine you to understand and feel the absolute best because you know it's the best and you ain't nobody you know that um we're in this whole drip age ain't nobody got your drip you and right that's the bro. Whole point. you right because you know because i ordered some shorts from you and you went ahead and threw mm-hmm. me a, a shirt on the love dog mm-hmm. those shorts felt so good feel so good uh, and 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 I I purposely ordered some colors that I never wear, <laughs> but you know yeah. I, I figure hey if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do it let's do it, and then the shirt mm-hmm. initially just seemed like a regular shirt, but when I put it on the cut is it, it, it's it's the shirts to wear the cut and the weight and the way it wraps around it was a crew cut shirt. The way it wraps around your head, I mean your neck, the cut of it, the the little extra, the, the little weight in the cotton, and then the uh the the print isn't just that uh the DTG, you, you have some topographic feel to it, so it was that was like my go to shirt, still is, uh when when I'm just hanging around, you know what I'm saying when when you know I'm in the house, I'm going to leave the house. But I ain't try, you know, it ain't nothing crazy. This is, I'm throwing on this shirt. Uh, because I feel comfortable said, in it. You fell for the trap. There you go. You yeah, fell for the trap. You gave me that free, that free dope. <laughs> and, and like, and then when I tried to go order more, because, you know, I be trying, you know, I be trying to support low key. I know, you know, uh, because it's your shop, you, you might eventually see. But then when I, I be trying to order low key again, then you locked me out completely. Mm-hmm. At first, you just had one product locked. Me and the whole site was locked. I said, this man, mm-hmm. Zay, is pulling some psychological warfare over there with his customers. <laughs> and, I and, and I ain't put like, it behind you. It, it goes back to how we was back in the day we hustled, when we was hustling. Yeah. We didn't have much. So anytime you saw me, anytime you hear me, you're going to remember me. Man, I went to that dude's site and I couldn't even buy none. Either he's selling a bunch of them or this dude suck. I'm going to go find out next time. I'm going to go check again. Mm-hmm. Because I just seen somebody else with it on and they saying it's their favorite shirt. I want one. And then now you, you go, want it. Then you See, go the to your Twitter is, and you're still bumping. People sharing. People talk about the new products, but I can't even. Okay, they must know the code. I don't know the code. 
Ah, this yeah, dude. I want to be in. I want to be in on it. I want to be in. So what takes place is you go, okay. Well, I gotta maybe if I buy something, then I might get the code in the future or mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. No, <laughs> <laughs> nobody has the code. Like yeah. re- they really don't. Mm-hmm. Um, I just do. Yeah. Um, or if I want want you to have it, like we we that was the same thing we had. I said, here's the code. Have a blast. But it creates. I understand that I don't have. Like, I know how much it costs to get hot as a clothing brand. Like, the exact dollar. Mm-hmm. I don't got that. But what I got is I can out-hustle pretty much the best of them. I can out-think the best of them. And I ain't got nothing but time on my hands to get it right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just a call right. And just a call back before we... We slide. It, it goes back to that proof of concept. Uh, what a lot of people be trying to do is find an investor prior to they prove significantly prove their concept. And what 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 happens when you find somebody with money before you've proven that it's a good investment? Either they're going to just tell, you no, which, you know, you were already prepared for that or they're going to see the value. And because you have not proved your concept significantly enough to where it's real numbers or at least they can extrapolate real numbers. Now all of your equity is gone. Yeah. You should have me on again so we can talk about how data is not real. Oh, no, nah, I, I, bro. It, I, I'm glad you asked. Because <laughs> that is not real. Mm. Not, not the data we use. It ain't real. And this is coming from somebody that was a business operation analyst. That is not real. And when you say no matter what you get. And when you say it's not real, do you mean that you can take that data and make it whatever you want it to say? Is that what you mean when you say it is not real? I can make it say whatever I want it to say. I can sell it based on whatever I want to sell it on. Like we can buy you and I, you can buy ads for your podcast right now. And they tell you your reach, don't they? Yeah. They say, if you pay this much, you're going to reach this many people. Mm-hmm. Based off of what? Based off of what? I guess based off of what they say. Exactly. I- now, we, we know the music game. I still study the music game. Mm-hmm. I know you know. I know you know about the bot farm and the data farm yeah. to get your streams up. Like so, if you're saying I can reach this many people if I put it on Spotify and I advertise exclusively on Spotify, I can reach this many people. But you're not even sharing the fact that you don't even know how many of those people are from streaming farms. Mm. Because that's not information you're interested in. Because if you put it on paper, then I have to analyze that too. The only data we get is data that can be presented as worth money. I'll be transparent with you. Um, majority of my sales come from Twitter. I don't know why, but they do. I have 200 followers on Twitter. I have a thousand followers on Instagram. Mm. So why is it the place that I have the most followers generate me the least amount of money? And I didn't buy my followers. They real. Mm -hmm. But that's data that you can't extrapolate. You can't extrapolate loyalty. You can't extrapolate feelings. That's the data that I really want. Mm. And like how you just said, that's my go-to shirt. That's the data I want. Let me get that real world. Because then I make more of that. Mm -hmm. I make more of that. Not advertise something else to you. And and like, bro, because and you said so. So how much? 
All right, and and so first, be- before you go into it, why is why is this even important for people to know? Because I'm assuming you're directing this this toward the uh, people who are actually paying for online advertising. Uh, is is Absolutely. is that what? All right, so why is this important for the online? Uh, uh, and, and usually, you know, they're smaller companies because uh, I think a lot mm-hmm. of the larger corporations. Uh, you know, they probably uh, they they put a mechanism to account for all of the farms, maybe. And, and, and they probably spent millions of mm-hmm. dollars in in research and development to even learn this stuff and, and how to account for mm-hmm. all for, for all of these. But for a small business owner, mm-hmm. why is it important for them to know this and how do they overcome it? It's important to know it because I can everybody start their business differently. Somebody save up like a bag, they, they have a number in mind, then they start. Some people start with nothing and say, maybe it'll work. Both of those things, you ain't seen. You're not hitting the market, which means you have to advertise. You have to. Mm-hmm. You have to. But that doesn't mean in the easiest way to advertise is on Facebook. It's the easiest thing to do. Mm-hmm. You can pay for an ad on Facebook and it's on Instagram as well. You're hitting two markets. But the thing is, and I don't, I'm a few episodes behind on your show, so I don't know if you mentioned this. If you have a website, if you do not have a Facebook pixel on your coding, you are doing it wrong. Everything you're doing wrong. And when you're you say pixel, wrong. is that is that kind of like the the Google Analytics? Absolutely, it's just a piece of code you put on your site, and its job is to monitor everything. We all know Facebook know everything about about you that they want to know about you. So, I just explain again. I don't know if I'm encroaching if you ever just spoke to this. Oh no, nah, bro, but. I, I, See, and that's what I wanted because, dog, I knew one of your one of your wheelhouses was uh, technology and <laughs> all of these yeah. numbers. But I I, I say, man, it, we'll be talking forever because I don't I, I did. That's why I was trying. That's why I'm glad you're talking about it now, because I didn't even know if you wanted to. I didn't even know if you were still into it. I just knew at the time you knew more than everybody that I knew on these subjects as it relates to technology you were what they call an early adapter to new technology yeah so so yeah now nah, we never talked about it but uh go ahead uh t- tell people about this because i've been hearing the term pixel a lot and and okay and, and and when i hear it you know i i assume what it meant because th- this is the first time i said it out loud pixel when you say pixel you're talking about google analytics uh so can you explain people what that is and is it visible? Like if you go to somebody's site, is it no. visible? So um, just to explain what you see, when you look at a screen, you're looking at a bunch of pixels. A Facebook pixel is the size of one pixel and it's transparent. And that one pixel can find out every single thing about the person that just came to your website to the point that it knows what you like, who your friends are, what your friends like, what's the last thing they looked up, what's their favorite color, how many kids they got. All of that from something that's transparent in the size of one pixel. And is is that a... Is that when you click, do you accept these cookies? No. Without even accepting them cookies, no. they, 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 the pixel is looking in. Absolutely. And it sounds scary, but we got a business for them. You got a business for them. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the data that we're given is not real. Um, so I'll break that down. You get on Facebook. They tell you to pick your audience where you want to market to. 
in theory, that looks real good. I want to market to 18 to 35 that live in this area. They like, it's real granular. It seems like you're doing something. You put that in and your engagement is 10% of what you expected. Why? Because you just threw a big net out and said, if it's fish out here, I'll catch them. Mm. Now, with a Facebook pixel, it ties into how granular all those things are. With a Facebook pixel, you go to my website. They go, Rand just came to your website. Here's his Facebook email address. Here's his Facebook. Here's his friends. Here's their friends. Here's their last post. Here's what they like. Here's what they don't like. And it analyzes all of those things. Mm -hmm. So during the next time I want to do, I have a, a post right now that's under review. Um, just sharing it. All right. It's going to look at my Facebook pixel and say, these are the people that need to see it. Just these people. So if I say I want to advertise, I'm going to talk to the small businesses. I want to advertise $5 a day. What that, what that pixel going to do is going to say that five bucks only go to people that know what they even looking at, looking at. Mm -hmm. Not 18 to 35. No, this dude bought a pair of these same exact shoes last month from mm -hmm. somebody else. This person Googled pizza in the past hour. You got a shirt that got pizza on it? I'm going to give them that ad. Mm -hmm. Like, people talk about how Big Brother's watching them. Like, you'll be talking about something, and then it's an ad on your Instagram feed. Mm -hmm. That's a Facebook pixel working. And, and here's the thing. It's one of them things like, what you going to do about it? Might as well learn it and try to benefit from it. You know, uh, of course, you know, so like, pe some it people, sounds scary, but it's also smart. It is. I see. And, and the reason why I know a little something about it is on my site, on rightlifecoach.com. Uh, make sure you go check that out. People y'all go there. Yeah. Do so, that. but, but Do on that. my site, I have the Google and analytics plugged in and I have my LinkedIn analytics plugged in, but I'm going to be honest, I don't know how to read the data yet, but I did know it was very important from day one to put it on my site. Because if, whether A, when I learned to read the data, or B, hire a professional that knows how to read the data, they're going to be able to say, all right, uh, you've been collecting this from day one. Mm -hmm. and, and the so more, the more you got, the better. Go ahead. So you're an you're independent contractor, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have different type of entrepreneurs and everything like that coming to your site. One of the things that you have data for is how to reach out to every single one of those people. This is a new product that I'm doing. This speaks to you. I know it speaks to you because I know what you do. I know what you like. I know the last thing you watched. You watched this on YouTube yesterday. What I'm talking about right now, you looked it up yesterday. So let act, let's let's not act like you like I'm not here for a reason. You're gonna have to fuck with me, mm -hmm. and it makes it to where they can't say no to you. So now you got new clients because back in the day it used to be called smoothing. You used to know everything about the person. You used to know how to cater to their needs, take them out to the right restaurant that they like so forth and so on. We just doing digital smoothing. Digital smoothing. Digital smoothing. Mm. That, that that's I think that's what I'm probably gonna call this episode. <laughs> hey man, thank you so much, Zay man. You you are somebody that that gave me an opportunity when nobody else would. You're somebody that I know I can reach out to and get an answer to something still knowledgeable on so many subjects willing to share. You have a quality 
a quality quote clothing line that most people can't afford. And you're, you're doing the research, the R and D, the research and development. It's, it's the equivalent. It's the equivalent of somebody going to their favorite grocery store, then shopping instead of going to uh, you know, a, a store that you're not familiar with. Uh, this this grocery store curated everything before they even put it in your face because they know you. Now they're presenting this mm-hmm. to you. I think that's what uh, Magnus is gr- is greater is doing. Uh, I think uh, Zay. I know because you know I'm in a field where you know I always got to leave a little room for to 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 negotiate and wiggle around. But this is an area where mm-hmm. I don't need to need any, any room. I know. That if Zay, oh man, see, uh, Magnus, <laughs> I called you by you go. All right, you cool. I, I know that if Magnus is saying that he's doing serious research and development, I know that when I got those clothes, I thought I was just supporting a friend, and then I put it on. Like wow, I know that you'll probably love it too, man. I want to go ahead and man, I got it. This is the most sincere applause I ever given. To Magnus, my friend. Thank you. Over 15 years and will be longer. And now that I know that you're leaving in January, bro, I, hey, man, don't you can't, man, tell me when, bro. All you got to do is give me a I'm, date before you leave, and I'm hanging out in Colorado, I'm in man. the city. Or, or better yet, I'm in, I'm in the city all December. When you say in the city, moved, what do you mean? I'm in the city. Duval County. Well, shit, we gonna be hanging. You gonna come by the spot, all that good stuff. But I still, I, I wanna, I wanna see Colorado too. I wanna see Denver with a, a somebody who's been there for so long. So just let me know, bro, if it's Tell possible. Me. I don't know what you know. I, I don't know what is uh what the politics. Well, Tell me when this gonna be. Well, it, I guess let's do it after November third because you know if there's anything that's being restricted, you know, due to politics. Uh, it, it it probably won't be restricted anymore. You see what I'm saying? Uh, so, I'm with you. So yeah. So boom, bro. Uh, so that I guess that means if you're gonna be here December and mm-hmm. November third, so that means I'm coming sometime in November, right? Boom. Work. We're gonna we're gonna make it work. And I think you said the best place to stay uh, as an out of towner. Did you say Market Street? Yeah. Okay. If you want to be in the middle of everything. You want to be um, off Market Street or 16th Street. Bet Those two streets cross one another. Bet it up. All right, man. All right, y'all. I'm gonna be in um I'm gonna be in um uh <laughs> Denver next month. Uh uh, and uh we gonna hang out. We gonna we gonna man. Hope hey, I don't know, man. What you uh, let's, DDB reunion? Let's shoot something. Let's shoot something. Um, I'm starting YouTube. I'm, I'm gonna be in Mexico. I'm gonna be doing travel vlogging as well. I gotta, I gotta make sure that everything that I do, as, as, as crazy as it sounds, but I mean, we entrepreneurs, but we gonna be real with it. Yeah. Everything I do, I want somebody else to pay for it. Absolute. So I'm absolutely, I'm gonna be travel vlogging. So I gotta have, I gotta have the info. You traveling to Colorado? Boom, that's a video. Let's and, get it done. And people just got an inside of what I miss about when you know us living in the same city. We were literally closing the episode about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> and then, boom. Yeah. We, we went off into another tangent that had substance and added it's value. Because, like, we valuable dude. We valuable dude. We have something to, to bring to the table. So we got all of these ideas and understanding that's just pent up. And we just don't get the rooms to do it. Mm. Are the right That's conversations. That's what this is all about. Are the right Correct. conversations. What I, I was actually on another mutual it's, friend of ours podcast, uh, The Raw Hype, uh, recently. If okay. you if you didn't check it out, go check it out. But uh what I was Please telling do. him about uh what I do uh as a life coach is most people and and, and dog, that's something that we had, bro. Dog, we used to be in each other houses. Dog, I, I you, I, I know I could leave my house and not think about if something was coming up missing, and I hope vice versa. And, and so most people 
throughout their entire lives, dog. It's it's some people throughout their entire lives, but some people only periodically get to have a conversation with somebody who they believe is knowledgeable, that they trust, and that's unbiased. It's rare to find that. Right. I'm, I'm gonna say this right now because I said it. Like, I went on this tangent yesterday on social media because that's the risk that people best place to reach people. I'm going to stay at Hill. Nigga, I'm proud of you. Thank you, bro. Like, we from the mud, dog. Like, yeah. we from the mud. Like, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of Ace. I'm proud of Hype. I'm proud of Rebel. Like, we from the mud, dog. Yeah. Like, this ain't, this ain't, like, the shit you went through, you ain't supposed to be, you're not supposed to be doing this right now. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the man. shit I went through I should not be doing this right now but we real businessmen we got real talent we got real heart we got real desire so everybody that's listening to this get you some of that mm. and then you're gonna get you some money and on that note Magnus at this point in his journey is greater, but eventually Magnus will be greatest. Thank you so much, man, for coming and, and chopping it I up with me. You. And I am going to be hitting you up very soon to solidify these travel arrangements, man. And I'm looking forward to you being back in the city, man. We're going to try to keep you off the road, man. You know how you do when you when you get in that little uh, that 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 speed demons uh the little i forget the name exactly. of the car you had the little red <laughs> so we we gonna try to keep the, the orange car yeah, yeah we're we gonna try to keep yeah. you a, a show for while you're here uh uh but um, man <laughs> that's that's you that. gotta worry about market street five bedroom house you good buddy oh look at that look at that see see and that's another thing about uh our <laughs> friendship we don't expect things but when one, once one of the friends make an offer we in there. <laughs> All right, man. That's what's yeah, up, man. I, I appreciate it, dog. So hey, we gonna be. I'm gonna be that, dog. As soon as I get off this phone, I'm gonna be looking at flights. It's two hundred. It's two hundred bucks. Oh yeah, round trip from Jacksonville to Denver by about two hundred cash. Maybe 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 yeah, somewhere between two to three. You know what I mean? But I'm a baller regardless. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey man, but I, it's a good investment. Oh yeah, absolute man. I especially when they're giving away Ace. <laughs> but anyway, yep. uh, man, I appreciate you, bro. Uh, we're gonna be linking up soon. Thank you for being on the Entrepreneur This Podcast. And as always, you you on the, you. you 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 made me think. Of, I never thought that things were gonna shift from China to Mexico, and it makes sense. If that is the plan, why certain things are happening now? Because I, I be I be picking up stuff, and I know how negotiations are formed. And I'm like, okay, now um, that makes if you sense. Google, tell, for your fans, uh, then this last thing I'm gonna I'm gonna say because I, I can run my mouth. Um, Google where Volkswagen, Porsche are currently being manufactured in mass. Mm -hmm. Canada. Mexico. Absolutely. That's what it's shifting to. Be ready, guys. Homework assignment, y'all. And once again, regardless of what what you emotionally believe, what you politically believe, look at the math. All right. And that this has been Magnus X. Thank you for coming on the Entrepreneurs Podcast. Thank you for having me. That was Magnus Etz of Magnus is Greater. Definitely make sure you go to his site. Check out his products. Definitely quality stuff. I can vouch for it. Right now, I just want to take the time to thank everybody that's been listening to me. This is episode 10. I remember when just a few months ago, this was only an idea. I didn't have the equipment. Did not have any other graphics, did not have any other trademarks, any of that, any of the URLs, none of that. But now it's episode 10. Something that was just an idea, I 
took from my mind and brought it into the tangible world. Stop right now and look around. Stop. Do a 360 spin. Everything that you're looking at was an idea first. And if you're standing outside and you did a 360 spin and all you saw was rocks and dirt, then whatever your spiritual belief is, I guess. But I'm talking about if you're in a house, a building, in a car, on a highway, it was an idea first. Then it was written down. And then it was brought into the tangible world. Some people try to skip the process. They wanted to go from idea to tangible. Write it down. I also want to thank my international listeners. I mean, I got listeners in in multiple places, but you know, I'm not going to front like it's a lot of people. But let me tell you, the most that I've seen in one location is India. I've never been to India. But in the country of India, I have, last time I checked, 91 unique downloads. What does that mean to me? That means at the very least, I have at least 91 people who downloaded an episode one time. That also means at the very least, or at the very most, is 91 people. At the very least, there are 10 hardcore listeners who downloaded all nine episodes. And then there's that one extra person who just got introduced. I'm excited about that. If you want to talk to me, if you want to uh, let me know what you think of the show, something that you learned that you never knew about, something that you enjoy, you have some ideas, uh, reach out on rightlifecoach.com. Uh, go to my contacts page and introduce yourself. Let me know you exist. There's more to come. This has been episode 10 of the Entrepreneurs Podcast. Or, as I'm sure you look forward to, this. It's the Entrepreneurs Podcast. Got him, got him, got him, got him. Make another couple hundred grand a month. No, I can do it. I just got to stand a hunt. Grab some snacks and some fluids and a couple of hands of blunts. I play through the fourth quarter. I don't play in the fun. Got to make another couple hundred grand a month. Watch me No, I can do it. I just got to stand a hunt. Grab some snacks and some fluids and a couple of hands of blunts. I play Rand- through the love. fourth quarter. Words to cut, I got lots of swords I'm old school like a harpsichord I'm, I'm no fool, I'm with the gods and lords A cold brew that's quality hops, of course Just for the crews that's tired of mopping the floors the If you're now. still with the carrots and sticks All the demerits and tricks The clock punches and free lunches when you're coming on Sundays I'm sorry my dudes, this song ain't for you Just keep on working till you're eating angel food I come home and crank on the news It's for the creeds with the LLCs, yeah the board of directors that make the directors yeah. The sole proprietors that pray for protection uh, And the ones with the solid business plans That's looking like cake to investors yeah, You yeah, do right a service when you wait for perfection That picture doesn't exist but doesn't dismiss I insist as you miss it, you fix it, you get it Wise words I once heard from a seasoned detective Things that look different once you change your perspective Look at me now, boy. gotta make another couple hundred grand a month No, I can do it, I just gotta stand You've just been listening to the Entrepreneurs Podcast, the place to come hear real entrepreneurs and business owners bear it all. If you just arrived to the station, subscribe to the station. But they said I had to do it, I'm a fake was finished Man, that's nothing, I start a company and take percentage Now I got 40 acres in the mule with inflation I'm out of state, rooms all the hate and that's the fuel And don't break till you finish, if you break you ain't finished You treat it like a comma when it's breaking the sentence Repentance, wise words I once heard from a carpenter's apprentice Things a lot different once you start your position Look at you now, gotta make another no, I can do it, I just gotta stay in the hunt Grab some snacks and some fluids and a couple of hands of blunts I play through the fourth quarter, I don't play in the punt Gotta make another
another couple hundred grand a month. Watch me snow, I can do it, I just gotta stay in the hood. Grab some snacks and some fluids, send a couple hands on lunch. Watch me step through the game, for the plan a month. Don't play, 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 don't play